In this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate 99% of your content workflow. Creating content is a time-consuming and a chaotic process, so the more we can streamline and automate the entire process from beginning to end, the more content that we can create and the more business results and revenue we can generate for our business. In this video, I'm gonna specifically focus in on the planning portion of the content creation process. I have other videos that cover the process from start to finish, but I wanted to create individual videos for planning, creation, editing, repurposing, posting and analytics so I could go deeper on each of those individual topics. And today we're gonna to go deeper in the planning process. So when I think of planning, I'm really thinking about what are the recording events in the future that I am going to record? Is it a YouTube video? Is it a podcast interview? Am I gonna sit down and batch a bunch of vertical videos for a place like TikTok or YouTube Shorts? It's really what are the events or the recordings that I'm gonna do in the future? And that always starts with ideation and we'll cover these other sections as we go. So I use a platform called Airtable and this is a demo account that I've created to show demos like this. And we're gonna focus in on this events tab. So the first view you see on the left here is really where do we manage all of our ideas? So we often have a lot of different ideas. They may not actually all become recordings. So this is a stage in the process where me and my team can sit down week to week and we can decide, hey, what are all the ideas that are on the table and which ones are we actually going to record? And so you can see all of the different ideas these sample test ideas that we can demo here today. In this particular view, I'm grouping everything by event type. So we have upcoming client calls, we have upcoming interviews, and we have upcoming YouTube videos, and they are grouped together by event types. Now what event types allow me to do in my system is really just to define the different characteristics of these different types of events. So I have an event type for YouTube videos, I have an event type for when I'm batching videos, for client calls, interviews, sales calls. If you're an agency, you might have in-person shoots where you're going to a client's location and recording them there, or you might have other types of custom events. And for each different event, you might have a specific brand that that event is for, or there might be some specific default workflow. So I'll go more into workflows in future videos, but this is really where we just describe after we record it, where do we publish it and how do we track and handle this type of content? Do we publish it to YouTube or TikTok or LinkedIn? And do we publish it at this time? I'll go more in depth on this in future videos, but just to give you an idea of what a workflow is. Event types also have have a potential pre-recording process. They have recording guidelines, a recording checklist. And then we can also define a customized script template that we can create every time we generate a new event. Here is a sample YouTube script. And every time I create a new YouTube event, it's going to copy this template document and then I can modify it for that specific YouTube video. So let's jump back over to events and continue to work through the workflow. Now, one thing I will mention is that Airtable is pretty cool and you can create these customized forms. So I have a form here that if I open up, I can add in a new potential event. So if I have an interview with Alex or Mosey coming up, I can put that in here. And then when I jump back to Airtable and the ideas, I can see that that event has now been added. I can also add that form to my cell phone. So if I'm out and about and I have a brilliant idea, I can make sure to capture that in the system. And then in our weekly planning, we can review all of the ideas that have come into the system that don't have an event type. Then we can assign event type as this. This is obviously an interview, so I can select interview and then it's gonna fall out of that grouping. And now we're gonna see it over here. So there's obviously a few other columns that we can fill out here in the idea section. We can also fill these out later. We have brand, recording date, and publish date. So for brand, the system will keep track of all the different brands that are in the system. If you're an agency, you can keep track of your clients. You might have a personal brand. You might have a company brand. You can keep track of all those brands in the system. And then if you know the recording date and the publish date, you can add those here. And then the workflow status is another column that we have here. So if we were ready to move forward with a specific idea, let's talk about about how do how to create engaging video content. So let's say we were ready to move forward with this idea. We can go ahead and move it to any one of these different statuses here. Most likely we're going to move it to test. If we jump over to the workflow for YouTube videos, we can actually see that the videos or the videos that we see over here are also in that uncategorized column. You can come over here and see them in the uncategorized and then move them over to test idea. And then I'll explain what these other columns 
mean and how they function as we go. So let's take this event here and we're gonna move it to test idea. So test idea is really where we filter down even just a little bit more what video we are gonna record next. We might have two or three ideas that we really wanna think about and compare and contrast and really decide which one we're gonna move forward with. That could be this one here, how to generate sales or how to create engaging videos. So here we can kind of say, is this, a, is this a video that's likely to go viral? How easy is it to actually record this video? If I were to create a video about going to the moon, it obviously would be a viral video, but is that really practical? So these are some of the decisions that we can think about in this test idea column. Now, if we decide that we're gonna move this one forward, we can move it to the next column. And now we're really trying to decide what is the recording date and what is the publish date? So I can pop open this card here. We're gonna record it tomorrow and then we're gonna publish it a week later so I can add those in there. And then we are ready to move to the next step. So in my YouTube process, the next step that I take is I actually create the thumbnail. So this would be triggering different notifications to the different members of our team. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that we got that thumbnail created and and the designer uploaded that thumbnail and then we'll see that it's actually going to show us that thumbnail in the view here which is going to make the tracking of all of this content a little bit easier because if all you have to go on is this title and there's just a bunch of cards it's a little bit hard to see the difference so in this case when you add the thumbnail here it just makes it easy to see all of the different content that's going through the system i can show you a sample here of my production system you can see all the different thumbnails and how that just makes it easy to see at a glance what video we're talking about so now that the thumbnail is created we can go ahead and move to scripting. And one thing you'll notice over to the left here is I do have an automation that runs and you'll see that this new video that we created is sitting here in the queue ready to be processed. Once that automation runs, it's going to do a couple things for us that really set us up to streamline the rest of the process. And there's other automations that will trigger in the rest of the process, but I really want to highlight what happens in the event planning. So number one, we now have access to a script. So if I click on this button here, it's going to take us to a copied version of that script we were looking at before. I can actually write in the hook. So like in this video, I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate 99% yada, yada, yada. But if I come back to the template, you can see that's still intact. So now we have the ability to create a script and finish out that piece of the workflow of this particular YouTube video. Now, once we've finished that script, we can continue with the process. I'll go ahead and move this to record. And now we can actually sit down and record the YouTube video. So now that's where the rest of these buttons start to come in. Now, when that automation ran, it created a series of folders in Google Drive and frame.io. I'll talk about frame.io in just a second, but we'll first we'll focus in on the original assets. So in Google Drive, I automatically created a set of folders. You can also see there's a parent folder here on how to create engaging video content, which corresponds to the video we are recording here. But it also created this subfolder, original assets. And this is where we can dump in all of the videos that are associated with the recording of the YouTube video. Now, in some cases, it might just be one video where you sat down and recorded it, but some YouTube videos or a live event or a podcast might have have multiple camera angles, might have multiple videos that are going to be edited together to create one final asset. And the original assets is where we can drop in those videos to keep all of those videos protected for the long term. You might never know when you want to come back to these original assets and they will be stored safely here in the Google Drive. So once it's recorded and all of those videos are dropped into the original assets, you can move forward with the process and we can move to editing. So in this case, your editor is going to get a notification that a new video is ready for processing and they can go ahead and click on original assets. They can download all those assets and now they can upload a final version to frame.io. So if I click on this frame.io button here, it's going to take me directly into frame. You're going to see it also created a container to store all of the videos that we want to review from our video editor. So our video editor can take a YouTube video that they've compiled down from all the original assets and they can upload that to frame.io. And then frame.io is going to process that video. And I'll cover this more in future videos, but you'll see that the system automatically assigned a unique ID to this incoming YouTube video. And if we jump back to our event planning, you're gonna see that we also have a button here called Final Assets in addition to Original Assets. And if we click on this, it's going to take us to our Google Drive again. And this time it's gonna take us to Final Assets where you're going to see that it also copied in and stored that video into our Google Drive. So we also have that video here and we also have that video stored for the long term. Now the reasoning behind that is that 
that we want to make sure we keep all the original assets so that we can use them later. We want to make sure we also track all of the final assets. Frame.io is not necessarily where you want to store your large files for the long term because it is quite expensive compared to a solution like Google Drive. And most likely you'll end up removing all of those video files from Frame.io from time to time and just keeping everything in one specific spot like Google Drive. So from Frame.io, you can open up Frame and you can put in comments, you can review the video. There was a mistake here. You can even put some visual identification like that and then you can send that and it's going to store all of these comments so you can go back and forth with your editor and perfect the video and then once you guys have finalized that you'll know for sure that you have all of those files for long-term storage and you can also continue on with your process so from there you can move it to repurpose and this is where you can take your longer form video and cut it down into shorter clips for social media you can do that process straight in frame.io as well so we might have several different vertical videos that we upload into the system. And once these videos process, you'll see that it also gave them a unique ID. And then if we jump back to the final assets and refresh these folders, we now have those videos here as well. And so if we take just a second to recap what we're doing here is you can see we're just really setting ourselves up for success and streamlining this process because keeping track of all of these folders and all of these IDs, to have a human do it is a lot of work. But when we have a machine do it, not only does it create consistency, but it also just makes it easy to do the same things over and over and over and everyone in the process can get used to how things are done and they won't have to think about it day to day what was the name of that folder that i should create what was the formatting what was the way i was supposed to save this where was i supposed to save this you won't have to worry that your final assets were copied or saved you won't have to worry about the originals every part of this process is automated and streamlined to make it as easy as possible. And once you're done with that repurposing process, you can go ahead and move that to done. And all of the videos will sit in the done section until the team gets a chance to review and just make sure everything was done. There's some other things that I'll cover in future videos that really help you manage the process. Like right here, I can see that there's a total number of four videos in the system. 0% of them are actually done. So I can really track everything from a high level and where the entire project is. But as a team, once we reviewed a piece of content and we were all satisfied that that piece of content is done, I can move it to closed and then it's going to disappear. And now we've seen a piece of content go through the entire process from beginning to end. So now I hope you found that video valuable. Make sure to check out the next video that's popping up on the screen. Next, I'm going to go in depth on this content tab and how that works. It's really the content management system. How do we manage all of the individual pieces of content, all of the individual videos that are a part of event? How do we facilitate those through a workflow with our team? Make sure to check out that video that just popped up on your screen and I will see you there.